What is up, people? Today, I will be reviewing Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, and I got that coming up for you next. So I just got back from Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. It is late at night, but I am still going to record this video for you guys today. I it was very excited to see this film just because of, you know, all of the Spider-Man films that we have been getting for the past decade or so, you know, I mean, longer than a decade actually. It's it's just it, it kind of blends in together for me to be quite honest with you and this just looked like a real fresh take just because of the fact that it was animated and the art style here it literally looked like it could just be the comic book just brought to life on the big screen and guess what that is what this absolutely is this is such a just refreshing and unique take on the uh, character of Spider-Man and Miles Morales because this is actually Miles Morales's movie just the inspiration and the the just level of creativity here just pops off of the screen and I cannot express that enough this is the best animated film of the year by far by leaps and bounds I haven't seen them all but I can tell you with a certainty that it is and uh, that is just because of the fact that it is actually the most inspired not just animated film of the year but you know as far as spider-man films this has to be the most ambitious and the most inspired spider-man film since the original Raimi film so the story can get pretty convoluted, but what it basically is, is Miles Morales is just a typical kid in Brooklyn. And, uh, you know, he really has a, a, a new lot in life. He's going to a new school. He is trying to fit in with these new kids. And he's just an awkward teenager that is just trying to find his lot in life when he gets bit by a radioactive spider just like Peter Parker did. And uh, he continues to have these same powers and a little more powers than uh peter parker and this world is a world where you know uh peter parker's spider-man actually exists with uh miles morales and so miles actually even before he gets bitten by the radioactive spider actually looks up to spider-man and without going into too much him and spider-man eventually try to stop the kingpin from conducting these experiments that really open up a, a portal where a bunch of different Spider-Men from a bunch of different dimensions come into our dimension and here we are with the Spider-Verse. You have Noir Spider-Man, you have Spider-Woman, you have Spider-Ham, <laughs> and you have a few others as well and uh, actually two Peter Parkers that, uh, you know, you'll definitely get into with the movie and it makes a whole lot of sense. This movie is just crazy, crazy fun. And it is just, just a breath of fresh air for this franchise and for Sony. You know, Sony has really been the uh, studio that really made Spider-Man a, a stale franchise. And now without Marvel's help, because this actually was not produced by Marvel. This is Sony on its own because of the fact that this is animated. They don't need Marvel backing or Marvel producing. That Marvel contract doesn't even apply here. This is just uh, a breath of fresh air for Sony and for the Spider-Man license. And the art style here is just breathtakingly amazing. It is the comic book brought to life. And I cannot express that enough. I know that you have heard that many, many times before, 
by other movie reviewers about this movie, but trust me, it is true. This is the comic book brought to life, and it is done in just an amazing way. The art style here doesn't look cheap. I know that um, some people were complaining about the art style when looking at the trailers, but trust me, people, this is... I, I You know, honestly, if Sony just wanted to make a series of Spider-Man like animated films that were just like this, I would go and see all of them. Just because of just the colorfulness and the art direction here is just amazing. And it, it pops with colors that uh, really you have never seen before in a Spider-Man film. There are a lot of like pink and a lot of like neon colors here just because of the fact that those are actually Miles Morales's colors that really represent him. He has a lot more of a punk like 80s kind of like punkster vibe. The way that I would describe it is you know the uh the color palette and the punkster vibe that was in Watch Dogs 2 that game it literally looks like they kind of brought that here but it totally works with Miles Morales and his character. I just really like the fact that they have totally embraced Miles Morales here. And it doesn't even have to be about Peter Parker. Because it is really Miles' story. And he gets his own influence. And I, I definitely feel like he just really holds his own in this movie for the first time and that is so refreshing just because of the fact that you know I, i've seen the story of peter parker so many times so many ways i just really appreciate the unique take here and what they do with uh spider gwen or uh spider woman and you know spider noir and Spider-Ham. Spider-Ham was actually <laughs> one of the characters that was around when I was reading comic books in the 90s. And that's because he was actually, uh, he came out in the 80s. You know, all of these other characters. I don't, I, I've never read a Miles Morales' comic book just because he came out in like 2007, 2008, I think it was. And I was already out of comic books at that point in time. But... All of these characters are so unique here. Uh, Noir Spider-Man. That is actually uh, voiced by Nicolas Cage. He is really, really great in the role. And man, I can't say enough about this. This is such a unique take. And there are small things that I don't like about this movie. Like uh, Kingpin is very underdeveloped. And um, I don't even like the art style of the Kingpin. And... Uh, a lot of the uh, the artistic kind of uh, licenses that they took with uh, this particular film and how these characters look and how it changes from the comic books, I really do dig a lot of the changes that they have made to the characters, except for the Kingpin. I don't like his look here. But besides Kingpin and his plot that is underdeveloped, Almost everything else here works so well. And uh, I just can't say enough about it. And for that, I am going to give this a 9 out of 10. This is an amazing, amazing just visual experience that you guys should definitely check out. And I will be going to the movie theater tomorrow night, actually, for a surprise review that I'm going to film for you guys real damn soon. And after that... I am actually going to review The Nun for you guys and Evil Dead 2. I got that right behind me right here. So if you are excited about all of this that I have coming out for you guys, subscribe so you know when those videos come out. You know you want to see them. And as always, thank you for watching my videos. You guys are awesome. And I will see all of you next time.